Hello, and welcome back to Off Grid Style. I'm Nikki, and I'm so glad to have you here. Have you ever heard somebody say, oh, I'm going to be all right. I can survive on beans, bullets, and bandages? Well, okay, if you think so. Um, somebody, actually several people, have commented that on videos that I have put out. So I decided to do a video on this. Can you truly survive on beans, bullets, and bandages? So let's find out. So this concept of surviving on beans, bullets, and bandages, or also known as the three Bs, is generally speaking associated with emergency preparedness, especially in terms of catastrophic events and social breakdowns. So while the concept is actually a sound one as far as it goes, it's very limited and you really, in order to truly survive in an SHTF situation, you really need to consider what else you need to add to the three Bs in order to supplement and actually be able to live. If you enjoy this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thank you. So let's talk about the first of the three Bs, or beans, which is the foundation of someone's sustenance. Obviously, as we all know, beans as a source of sustenance and proteins are a very good choice to start your basic food supplies with. Beans are also rich in protein, fiber, and essential vitamins and minerals. Beans also are a reliable and sustainable source of protein, and they can be stored for an extended period of time, which means they are a very good source of long-term sustenance as well. But and there's always a but. There are a whole lot of issues with just living off of beans, which we are now going to talk about. Relying solely on beans to live, and that's all you're intaking into your body, is going to cause a whole lot of nutrient deficiencies. Yes, beans are very, very rich in a type of protein, but they lack a whole lot of essential vitamins and minerals that you need every day in order for your body to thrive. And this is why it's crucial to add a whole bunch of other stuff to your diet besides just beans, including vegetables, fruits, grains, and all of those things to ensure that you're getting a more balanced diet. And why, you may ask? Well, a diet of only beans can lead to issues like scurvy, anemia, bloating, diarrhea, which can end up being deadly, um, IBS, which can also end up being deadly, Lack of calories, which will lead to weakness, fatigue, weight loss, which you don't need to be doing in these situations, um, and a damaged immune system. Proper storage of the beans is also vital to them not spoiling. Some really effective techniques would include mylar bags and vacuum sealing, which will allow you to get a longer shelf life out of your beans. And of course, learning how to grow your own beans and other foods and learning how to preserve them is obviously going to help you live a more sustainable, healthy life. So now we're going to move on to the second B, which is bullets. So the inclusion of bullets in the three Bs kind of suggests that you're going to need to have self-defense um, and protection in SHTF situations. While having the means to defend yourself is obviously crucial, there are a lot of things that are important to acknowledge when you're in this bullet mindset. First of all, obviously, nonviolent solutions are always preferable, especially SHTF situations, because there may not be as many people, so you need every single person you can get. In SHTF situations, conflict should be avoided at all costs and whenever possible. By prioritizing negotiation, conflict resolution, all those things, it's going to help you not be so reliant on the bullets and only need the bullets in certain situations. And then, of course, there are legal and ethical responsibilities and considerations when you are faced with using bullets. 
you know, complying with local laws, yes, that is always an issue. Is it a lawless situation? Well, it doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to be lawless, and it may come back to you that you did not opt for much less extreme measures first and went straight to the bullets. In a lot of cases, there are alternative methods of self-defense that you should be learning anyway that you can use instead of immediately reaching for the ammunition. On top of that, ammunition is a very finite resource. You're only going to have so much. So you definitely want to choose other options first. Conservation of that ammunition is going to ensure your long-term survival. So you don't just want to fly off the handle every time somebody upsets you. You may want to look at investing in firearms training and courses and going to a range to maximize each and every single bullet that you do possess. Now we're going to talk about the third B, which is bandages. So obviously including bandages in the three Bs is really a reference to medical preparedness in an emergency. As we all know, in an emergency situation, access to medical care may be virtually non-existent or very, very distant. And so self-sufficiency and knowledge in medical care is priceless. But you do need to keep in mind the following. More comprehensive medical training may be needed, like wilderness survival training or even EMT courses. This is where that mag may come in handy for you, having somebody in your group who does have these skills. And of course, it can't just be bandages. You need to have other things in your medical kit to truly be ready for anything in an SHTF situation. You also should have a list of what is in that kit. You should go through this list and go through the kit regularly. Make sure that you have everything you need and that nothing has expired. And beyond first aid, the bandages, you need somebody to have the knowledge in your group perhaps or somebody that you are able to communicate with that has the knowledge for long-term care, chronic conditions, and also any preventative measures that need to be taken. So for all of you 3B people, what do you need to supplement your 3Bs to in order to survive? So I think it's pretty obvious from what I've covered so far that you definitely need to supplement your beans, your bullets, and your bandages, and I keep wanting to say barbecue. Hopefully I won't say that, but anyway, you definitely need to supplement those three things with a whole lot of other things in order to truly thrive and survive. So let's look at some other essential needs that you might have in order to truly survive. First up, of course, we have water. Water doesn't start with a B, but you definitely need access to clean water. A reliable source of water and the ability to purify that water in many different ways is a number one priority. Shelter. Obviously, you need to have shelter, reliable shelter. This is another one of those priority items. You also need the know-how to build that shelter. So learning how to build shelters, we have a video on it, is definitely also on that must-have list. Skills and knowledge, another hugely important one that doesn't start with a B. You need to develop a set of skills that you can utilize because you're going to have to when an SHTF situation occurs. And then there are the community type situations. Being able to have a community is obviously going to up your odds of survival exponentially. So this concept of survival on beans, bullets, and bandages is not actually valid. Or it is as a basis to a whole bunch of other things that you need to have or you're not going to survive SHTF situations. And while the concept, again, of beans, bullets, and bandages is a good one, you need to understand that you need to work on all of these other things as well if you want to survive. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I thought it was really fun to do because I have heard and seen a lot of comments about the three Bs on my um, videos. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do a video on that. So thank you for that idea, all of you who've used that term. Um, please let me know what you thought. You know I always love to hear from you. Also, let me know what you think of the new. Um, trying it out, see how you like it. So I would like to hear back from you. Tell me if you think it's cool. Y'all have a great day. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you again soon.